The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the August 20th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary day. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But way more important than that, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Go ahead and send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow trading down about 31 points, uh, 26, 104. and S&P is off six. So all the indices are in the red. So, too, is the spot volatility index. That's down 35 cents. We're going to have to pay attention to that. Must not have gotten the memo. If you take a look at gold, that's up four bucks, silver, 19 pennies. That's a little over 1%. To the upside, lights, we crude down a quarter. Natural gas is uh, basically uh, flat slightly higher leading the charge dollar wise to the upside stock wise it's mercado libre up 15 bucks bio red labs 12 shopify 12 home depot nine beyond meets up about nine to the downside madison square gardens off 25 bucks or nearly nine percent Sarepta therapeutics up 17 percent that's 21 bucks Netties off 11 or 4 percent. Netflix down 9. That's a little over 3 percent. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at, but I don't know what you want to look at. So let's look what I want to look at. Now, let's look at what the market is doing out here. It really just kind of boiled down the old soup to nuts. Prices trading in between a short-term support and resistance line that's established right here as we take a look at the ES Mini. Here's what we know about the ES Mini. We know that uh, right at about uh, 2,300 hours, this was on August the 18th, uh, is the last time that we saw a breakout inside the ES Mini. Now, we say a breakout because we had nine consecutive closes on a 30-minute basis where the close was greater than the close four bars earlier. That sets up that uh, breakout level, 2903.75. You want to know how these work? Price will pull back, and it will pull back to where it last broke out. So the beauty of using this tool out here versus saying, hey, you know, the breakout really took place all the way down here at the swing point at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon back on August the 15th is you and I don't have to do that. We don't need to do that. We shouldn't do that. What we should be looking for is where do we see breakouts and breakdowns at? Now, in the 30-minute chart here uh, for the ES Mini, you can see all the way back over here at about 3 o'clock in the morning on August 14th, uh, 29.32. That was a breakdown level. And then we had another one that occurred out here at about 4 o'clock, began at 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Nine consecutive closes with the close lower than the close four bars earlier, setting up 29.30.50. So how is it that uh, price at about 2.30 this morning, then again at 4 o'clock this morning and almost in essence at about the open why did it find resistance well that's where price had broken down what does price do uh when you uh top so to speak i use top as kind of a uh, okay i don't want to go higher any further you go back and you test support well in essence that's exactly what took place between that uh, 9 30 10 o'clock session out there 
Price got back. It didn't exactly hit 2903.75. It got to 2904 and a quarter, two ticks away. That's good enough for me. So what you can see here is you just have a good old short-term consolidation with price. Uh, so so don't if you're a bull, you know you be a bull. You're buying at 2903. If you're a bear, you're selling at 2930. Right now, price is right there, dead square in the middle. So not doing a whole lot. Okay. So what else can we do? What else can we make a determination of as to what's going on? Well, we said that. Spot volatility index was down. It's down 40 cents right now. So let's go peek in on it. Let's go peek in on it just simply by taking a look at the New York Stock Exchange chart. Now we're looking at a daily time frame. And the daily time frame, the very bottom portion of the screen is the spot volatility index. It's trading at 1649. The 50 day exponential moving average is 1637. That's the number to be watching today. I could care less whether the uh, S&P 500 is pulling back or not. The question is, where does the spot volatility index close? Now, not that I couldn't care less. It's just that what's more important, we already took a look at what's important on the ES Mini from the short-term standpoint. Now what we're trying to gauge is, hey, what's that spot volatility index doing? Now, it is normal to get down once it's been above that 50-day, as it has for quite a while. Uh, to get down and test that area, we looked at support inside the ES. We had a 30-minute chart. Uh, well, support, in essence, for the uh, spot volatility index is a 50-day exponential moving average. But, of course, you know and I know that if the spot volatility index closes below the 50-day exponential moving average, it's telling us that there's plenty of liquidity to go around, and we should continue to see the markets move higher out there. The markets mean the S&P, the, uh, the, the markets in general, certainly the New York Stock Exchange. Now, if you take a look at panel number two, panel number two is the advanced decline oscillator. Yesterday, closing above zero. Right now, it is above zero. Day two is muy importante. It's not just one close, but it is two consecutive closes above a zero line that says, okay, buyers are the ones that are in control. So on the short-term time frame chart right now, I would have to say we're neutral short-term. Now, as we take a look at the spot volatility index, it's leaning towards bearishness or sellers in control. But a close below, what was that, 1636 today would say, no, that's not the case. And that combined with the advanced decline oscillator, if it does close above zero today, that would definitely be telling us, no, that is not the case. Now, we've got more. We have to take a look at more. And here I'm right now focused on the S&P, the New York Stock Exchange. If we take a look at the S&P 500, what do we know about its market breadth? See, the advanced decline oscillator is, in essence, is providing you and I with information about the market breadth for the New York Stock Exchange. Well, what's the market breadth for the S&P 500? I am glad you asked me that question because here's what we know. We know that we had a bullish crossover yesterday at the close yesterday you had a positive bullish crossover of market breath what's that mean jelly bean what that means is that there's 164 constituents inside the s&p 500 trading above resistance resistance is the top of the profile only 81 so just slightly less than half, if my math is correct, slightly less than half are trading below the bottom of their profile. Now, you can have periods of time where it goes back and forth from positive to bullet to negative, and you get, in essence, a consolidation message. But right now, the market breadth for the S&P 500 for its daily time frame is bullish, says it wants higher price. That's why what we will do is pay attention to the spot volatility index. Again, that number to be watching at today's close around 1636. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back. I want to take a look at what you want to look at. Well, Peter was asking about, can we pull up the VIX futures? They roll the contracts tomorrow. Uh, if we take a look at that real quickly, well, we'll take a look at it for Peter. We get back from this breakout here. But since he's in the den, he'll be able to look at this screen during that time period. The commercial time period. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we'll come back to the spot volatility next. We've got a caller on the line. Uh, we have call ahead seating here. So let's go to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, uh, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? Doing well, Steve. Thanks so much for taking the call. Sure, my pleasure. And uh, so I know you want to take a look at uh, Freeport McMoran. And uh, why don't you tell us uh, what you're doing, how I can help you out? I hadn't looked at the stock for a while. I have no position or anything. What I was hoping you could look at is I was looking at the weekly chart, a, a three-year weekly, but I, I really am only going back to – it's a little tricky. I'm flying a little blind because I don't have any Internet. I'm just doing this on my phone. No, uh, no problem. No problem. Be, I, I believe it's back in April of 2019. Yeah. There's a high around 14 – and yes. change and then it came down the b point would be it looks to me like around either late may or june yes and then the c point would be it looks like i guess again july. i'm kind of guessing july, july, july and august yeah. and then so yeah. i just want to look like i might have broken that swing point with some volume so i'm just trying to project out what it could potentially go down to look like maybe seven range or something and if that's what you have and then okay is there something Further back, that you know, what some levels down there that would make sense to, you know, of course we need to see a reversal, all that kind of stuff. But I just was wondering sure. if there's something further back on the chart, down in that range, that would make sense that it could be a, some some support for it. Okay, so um, that, that's great. So uh, and, and and great job uh, to end it off of your phone. So what 
what Brent is asking about with regard, here's the weekly chart for Freeport MacMoran. And uh, Brent is trying to determine, hey, is there a small A to B equals CD pattern that is underway? And if we use the A point, B point, C point that he identified, which are correct out there, this would give us a one-to-one -one price projection of about $6.86. Now, on a weekly basis, price doesn't have to stop at the one-to-one -one because only 60% of the time does, uh, does an equity or any instrument make a one-to-one. -one. So we've got to be able to identify identify whether this is one of those time periods or not. We don't have to worry about that. As price hits that level, should it hit that level, then as Brent pointed out, we'd look for some type of bullish reversal signal to tell us that the A to B equals CD pattern has completed. So Brent, it would be 544 is the 1.272 and 686 is the one to one. Now, the other thing that uh, we need to do when we're taking a look at uh, Freeport McMoran is pay attention to what's going on with, uh, inside the Australian dollar. Because here's a chart. The top portion of the chart is the Australian dollar. The bottom portion of the chart is Freeport McMoran. And these two are very much tied together. So in order for Freeport McMoran to find a bottom, whether these are the daily time frame versus weekly that we were just looking at, uh, you'd ideally like to see a, uh, a pattern and complete inside the Australian dollar. So I'm just pointing that out to you. Now, let's take a look at, uh, you had asked the questions, is there anything else down in that level on a weekly chart? So for this, I'm going to just switch over to my black background charts or my e-signal charts out here. It's going to be a little bit easier for us to take a look at that level. The other thing that we want to do is say, is, is ask ourselves the B point, which was the week of May 27th, uh, that had volume of 67 million shares. It was passed last week with 119 million shares. So our theory is that when you pass a swing point with volume, it's a, what uh, we refer to as a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. So in Brent's case, he's asking that question, hey, you know, where do we see on the left-hand side of the chart? It takes us back into 2016 out there. Now, I would have to say if um, in 2016, more likely than not, uh, the price would head all the way back down to the lows of January, which is in the 390, 352 to 466 range out there. And it's very possible that there is um, an even larger A to B equals CD to the downside in Freeport MacMoran. The larger one, let's just see what that looks like, what that price projects for us. Uh, and here's that new A to B equals CD. That gets us down to 403. So I think from the weekly perspective, you know, that would seem more likely and and more logical, which would get you back to the uh, 2016 swing point area. If I pull over the monthly time frame chart for us, uh, Brent, um, you know, the monthly says, yeah, back in uh, January of 2016, that was a nice little TD setup, nine count bottom. It was bar number eight that identified the bottom back there. Um, You've got price below all the different profile levels out here. So I think unless there's some type of big turn in the Australian dollar, and let's go take a look at that here. Uh, well, first, any questions about, uh, about what we've just looked at in Freeport MacMoran itself? No, you're doing what I was hoping you could take a look at. And <clears throat> I'm looking forward to seeing the archive. I, again, I can't. When I get the sure. back, I'll be able to watch it. But... At this point, no. I'm just you know, listening to what you have to say, and I'll, I'll go back and review it, you know, more thoroughly once I have that. Sure. So here's the Australian dollar, and I want to put this on a, a weekly time frame chart as well. And so the Australian dollar, Brent, on the week of December 31st, 2018, made a, a gigantic uh, bullish hammer candle. And so that low... Uh, I'm going to give you that price point. Uh, well, that says Apogee. Don't worry about that. Is uh, 0.67435. Now that level is held, but I would say that if price were to, if the uh, Australian dollar were to close below that level, you know, we have that expression: if you're long, you're wrong. Meaning that if you see it close below the bottom of hammer candle, if you're long, you're wrong. So in order for for Freeport McMoran to make those lower levels out here, I would say the Australian dollar needs to bust through 0.67. 435 out there, which has been tested the last three weeks and is held, but I think that would give you your confirmation. Okay, that's great, Steve. I really appreciate it. And again, I'll, I'll you know, review it in the archives yeah. once I, uh, they're coming to fix my internet. Hopefully they can do that. <laughs> it's, I'll, it's, I'll terrible. That. it's terrible it's being without the internet. To, uh, it's weird. It's like when I was down at Big Sur, we didn't, which I love being down there, but you kind of, when you're used to having, you know, 
all the little conveniences that we have every day that when you don't, I mean, I was fine down there because it's such a beautiful place and sure. there's plenty of stuff to do just like it is at my own house. But I, yeah, I just, it's so, a little weird when you don't have it, you kind of get used to it. So, <laughs> yeah. So did they, did they fix the Pacific coast highway area where big Sur, where there was a rock slide a couple of years ago, has it been reopened or do you know? Yeah, they were still working on it when we went down there. So in between, Okay. Pacific Grove, and then down to Big Sur, there was uh, still some ongoing work. But you could tell, yeah, where there had been a big area taken out, and it's, it's more or less finished. They oh, okay, just doing good. the last parts of it, and so yeah, it's, it's much more accessible now. Very good, very good. All righty, hey, thanks. Always good to hear from you, and uh, let me know if there's anything else we can do. Oh, well, I guess one last thing though, because inside Freeport Macron, and what's interesting about watching the Australian dollar now, is there is the potential of a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom inside Freeport Macron. So price has been moving lower, doing less relative energy, no bullish reversal signal or anything. But again, just kind of watching that Australian dollar hammer candle, and then on the daily chart, you know, maybe there's some type of uh, bounce that will be coming uh, first. So uh, that's all I've got with Freeport McMoran. Okay, just quickly, what would be the 1.618? Would it be those numbers you were talking about if we're to be an expansion of that uh, CDD? So the 1.618 would be a price point of uh, uh, $3.64. Okay, yeah, kind of down in that range. All right, well, just yeah. be patient as always and see what happens. And what you told me is very helpful, and I really appreciate it. Steve, just have a wonderful day, and, and I'll talk to you soon. You bet. That was Brent in right. Martinez, California. Uh, Dow's down 53, S&P off 8. We'll be right back. We're going to go take a look at that uh, spot volatility index versus its forward futures contracts. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today the Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even
we give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, hey, we're going to go uh, talk about gold. Then we'll come back to that spot volatility next uh, with Bill in Jupiter. Bill, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm well, Steve. Thank you. How about yourself? Uh, also doing well. Thanks for asking. So tell me about Good. Goldilocks, what you want to look at, and how I can help you. Sure. So, uh, S Steve, this morning I was watching Larry Pesento, and uh, something interesting came up regarding gold, and that is that um, live speculators apparently, uh, this is based on the Commitment of Traders report, yeah. Live speculators are long, you know, net long, while commercial interests are net short. And I was, I was curious, do you use the Commitment of Traders report at all? You're such a great technical trader. You may, may not use it. I don't know. But um, so I was curious I, I if used, you use it and what you yeah. thought about that. So I used to, of, yeah, I used to use it uh, and, uh, and and keep a bunch of uh, the commitment of trader charts uh, updated. Uh, I don't have those updated. The second person in the last uh, half hour that's asked me about the COT reports for uh, for gold. So I can't I can't uh, I, I can't discuss it just as I, I since I don't have any information about it. Um, but uh, so but here's what I can share. So. So that being said, because you've taken a look at the COT data, what is your what's your take on gold and what it's doing? So what, what what's your yeah what's what's your take at this stage? What did you glean from the information this morning? Plus, as well, your own technical prowess. Uh, I'm, you know, I it looks to me like gold is consolidating a bit. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether you think that's right or not. And knowing that there are large interests on either side. What seemed to me would make it consolidate even further. Although Larry was saying the last time this happened, I forgot what what the date was. It was many years ago that gold really got took a pretty steep decline. But it would seem to me that having competing interests like that would continue to have gold consolidate or go sideways. So let's talk about the consolidation and let's let me give you what I would consider to be the consolidation area. And it's because uh, this morning there was a, a brand new TAS market profile. TAS market profiles provide us with a uh, with resistance and support levels. And and I consider the TAS market profiles to be kind of our virtual first down markers um, on our uh, screen out here. And so the bottom of that box is fifteen hundred dollars and thirty cents and the top is fifteen thirty four. 70. So in essence, there's our consolidation range. If price were to close above the top of the box bill, 1534.70, which is not above the uh, the most recent high from the trading day of August 13th, we'd still say that there's a breakout because resistance have, has failed. Likewise, if we are to see a break below the bottom of the box, 1500.30 you would anticipate that price is going to continue to fall. So, so yes, you're right. There's this. There's our consolidation level. Now, what I like to do is take a look at the specifically charts from a technical perspective. You know, are there any tops or bottom signals on whatever the time frame might be? So, this is a daily time frame chart that we're looking at, and we take a look at the daily time frame chart. What we can see here is price had moved higher, did with less relative energy, created the bearish reversal candle that happened to be a key reversal signal that was back on August 13th. Create another bearish reversal candle, bearish engulfing candle, three trading sessions ago. That is a topping pattern. But in order for a topping pattern to have something more intermediate, meaning a larger pullback, for example, the price target of 1412, we must see support broken. Now, support was broken yesterday, and that's when price broke through its uh, Stevie's green line, the oscillator on change line. But at the same time, and I was ready to uh, give subscribers the short signal. But however, uh, what gold was saved by the bell, saved by a new profile out there. <laughs> and the reality is because that's where buyers are lined up, 1530, and which is nice because the other profile, 
profiles were way down around 14, you know, 05 or something like that. So the great news is we definitely have topping patterns, but we also haven't seen the price of gold bust through support. So regardless of the commitment of traders data, my take is if we see a close below 1500.30 in gold, it's going to confirm the short term or intermediate term top that we see on the daily time frame and price should pull back to 141210. That's the price level where it most previously broke out. Otherwise, it's just consolidating sideways as you have uh, uh, properly pointed out. Wow, interesting. But Steve, it's below 1530 uh, now. No, it's 151710. Uh, the yes. December contract for gold, fifteen hundred. So one five a one five. At this one, level would indicate no, no. The, one, that the gold is going lower. No, 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 no. Uh, let me, let me. Uh, the the number for gold is one five zero zero point three, not fifteen thirty. Oh, I've got you. Fifteen, fifteen. I got no, you. no. My fault. Okay. My fault. Good ears on your no, part. No, my fault. <laughs> Bad speaking on my part. No, my fault. I, I yeah. got it. Yeah. So it's at fifteen hundred dollars. Well, at least I was sort of, uh, it is it is going sideways, obviously. I mean, just have to look at the chart. It's going sideways, but yes. not for long. It, it, something's going to happen. It's interesting. I, I wonder if that commitment to traders report means anything. And I don't necessarily use it myself. I just happened to be listening to Larry this morning. I thought that was pretty interesting and couldn't wait to ask you what you thought about that. So here's the deal. Here's what I've learned about the commitment of traders data. It's um, it's instead of looking at the speculators, you want to look at the commercials and then you want to look at the category that I fit into the non the uh, I forget what they call it. Um, what's the name of it? But it's basically all the little guys. So if you take a look at the commitment of traders data, it's usually if you watch all the little guys and you have to track this on a percentage basis out there and you'll find that the little guys when they get up to a certain level you can identify tops and bobs it's kind of like a contrarian uh, viewpoint you also take a look at the commercials and commercial traders and see what they're doing the speculators eh, throw that data out at least when i went back and i used to you know look at that stuff uh, really religiously um i didn't find it of much use with regard to the speculators but the large commercials the big money yes and then the, us small little guys that the cftc says we're you know we're too small to track so to speak um and not so fast so uh but look i, th I think we have enough information out here with regard to the technicals as to what uh, gold's doing and now we just have to wait to see is it going to bust through support or break above resistance. I don't know which that answer is. We'll soon Alrighty. find out. Terrific, Steve. Thank you. You bet. Thanks for calling. Uh, let's go take a look at the spot volatility index. So uh, Peter had asked, but I know he's got to go. Maybe he'll check out the archive. Here, what we can see is the spot volatility index. Actually, it's now ticked up. It's trading out at 17.05. That's up 17 pennies. But what you can see, what Peter was asking about, were the uh, futures contracts out here. So you'll see August through April 2020. And actually, the way that the spot volatility, uh, spot volatility index is set up, price below all of its futures contracts, um, is really a bullish setup. But what you and I know, it really isn't a bullish setup until price closes below the 50-day exponential moving average. It really is that simple, so to speak. So right now, it's trading above that level. Uh, and what may be going on in the market, can't discount this. Bill just talked about a consolidation. We can see a consolidation period back here in 2018, this little green box rectangle and we have a new one right here that is forming and this might be it this might be the trading range 2950 to about 2820 in the s p cash we'll be right back if you're in the cd market and looking for a secure investment the tiger first mortgage program may work for you the security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go to a couple of our questions that have come in by email. The first one here from uh, George in Tampa. George uh, wants to take a look. His question is, uh, he wants to take a look at two stocks, BTG and uh, Ken Ross Gold, CGC. And the question is, which is stronger? So, um, uh, George, listen in, and you tell me which is stronger after we take a look at it. So the first thing is, let's look at Ken Ross Gold. Let's take a look at our TAS market profiles. Uh, just like the gold contract was trading in a sideways consolidation, so too is Ken Ross Gold. You can see that that is established by its TAS market profiles. The bottom of the box is 455. The top of the box is 517. So uh, that's neither strong. It's just neutral. It's trading. Now, now price yesterday got down to that 455. Five level didn't hit it to the tick, but really close enough. Uh, the box itself uh, is equally distributed, meaning the center, which is at 492, is pretty much dead smack in the uh, center there. So neither bulls nor bears have uh, uh, an upper hand uh, in between that price range, in between that consolidation. From a daily standpoint, price is above the weekly. From a monthly and a quarterly, price is above that. So everything looks good there. If we take a look at the daily time frame here, look for any kind of topping signal or pattern. Um, I do have a row momentum indicator top so very much like gold uh, if uh, Kinross gold would then be weak we would say George if price were to close below 456 and if it did that then what that would say is the target for Kinross gold could be all the way down to 341 it's not there yet but watch the level of 456 out here inside of it so it looks pretty strong I don't see any type of topping signal on the uh, weekly time frame well I say that but let's go make sure about that well, I take that back. There certainly is a topping pattern. C A to B equals C D. That's what Brent had called about. Now, Ken Ross Gold made a bottom back here in November of 2018 with a TD setup nine count, a Rhodes momentum in.
indicator bottom. So a real nice way for it to make bottoms. And now it has made the 1 to 1.272A to B equals CD. I'm looking at the weekly time frame chart. So uh, what that says, though, uh, George, is really watch 455. 455 uh, is a level that if Kinross Gold closes below, it's signaling to you that it wants to make uh, an even further run lower out there. So let's take a look at the other instrument. You want a BTG. I think that's B2 gold or something like that, BTG. Uh, let's go say B2 gold, it is. Uh, so here, just simply from a profile standpoint, price is trading above the top of its daily profile, above the top of the weekly, above the top of the quarterly, above the top of the um, uh, monthly. So just simply from a profile perspective, we would say that this is the stronger of the two, not really consolidating sideways, had moved sideways. If it stays above 356, in essence, it's above sellers out there. Now, not that there weren't some sellers from the high on August the uh, 7th out here, August 7th, that's where it's made it's a 52 week high at least it's 52 week high out there um, but uh, price really holding uh, support at this stage the ultimate support on this would be three dollars and 20 cents if we take a look at btg i didn't uh, populate my other charts let's do that here as we pull this over you know, I don't have a topping pattern per se just yet. If I do my wave counts from the bottom, um, yeah, that's not a topping uh, signal or pattern out here, uh, which would be wave count number seven. So this looks pretty good. Let's look at the weekly time frame chart, see what we see. Uh, do we have any kind of topping pattern? Here, there's the A to B equals CD pattern as well. So let's draw that in. So here, that A to B equals CD, the one to one was 365, the one, 1.272, $3. 99 cents now in this case here there is no topping signal from a weekly standpoint of that a to b equals cd there's no bearish reversal candle out here uh, so this looks uh, stronger i would say that this looks stronger btg looks stronger than kinross gold although kinross gold was just really consolidating sideways out there so george in tampa I hope that that helps you out. If not, uh, write me back and I'll answer those questions uh, next. The other question that has come in, this is coming in from, uh, looks like Jane. Jane B. Uh, wants to take a look at um, Micron Technologies. I'm, uh, she's in long, just wondering where it might bottom. So let's go take a look at the Micron, do the same thing. MU is a ticker symbol out here. And uh, so as we take a look at Micron, here's what we know as well about its market profiles. It's trading above the top of its box. It's trading above the top of the daily box, above the top of the weekly box, above the top of the monthly box. So uh, again, above resistance levels out there. You're asking where might this bottom? So, Mike, I, I would guess, Jane, you're asking where might this pull back to? So, where this could pull back to on a retracement here would be the top of its market profile. And that level is 43.49. Uh, let me get Mu going on my other uh, charts as well. Not my, but Mu. I might help. MY is not an active ticker symbol out here. So, that would be an area where it could be bulk pull back to. Now, Micron Technology, this is an instrument that the subscribers and I are long. The reason that we're long is because uh, this tested several times a breakout area. This is a gap, so different than the TD setup nine count, although we'll take a look at that and see that that also identified the bottom. But there was a breakout on July 10th, 51 million shares. When price pulled back there, on August 5th, it was with 35 million, 35 going against 51. The next test of that was on August 7th, 35 million. The next test of that level was on August 9th, 22 million. See how volume's kind of drying on the vine, so to speak? And August the 12th, I owe Tom a, uh, the, the drying on the vine, a $1, uh, $1 royalty for using this terminology. But you also had a pullback of light volume on August the 12th. So it was telling us that uh, sellers didn't have the energy to push through that gap to the upside. And that, in essence, is when we went ahead and went long. Now, there was this nice move out here on August 13th. Good volume, 33 million shares. Um, and, you know, price is struggling to get over that level. But here's Mu on the daily basis. By the way, MU, Mu is a nice little sake out there, if you ever see it on the menu. Uh, it's Tiger's uh, favorite sake. If we take a look at the uh, TD setup nine count, so in addition to price pulling back, to a breakout area with lighter volume. This also had a nice bottom here with that TD setup uh, nine count. Uh, 
we'd like to see price stay above Stevie's green line. That's 44.43. Um, that would be nice. That would be a test of a uh, bullish area out there, a test of support, and would suggest that this should run to 47.68. So with regard to bottom out here, you've got the uh, top of its daily profile, 43.49. The bottom is at 41.40 out there. Um, and that's what I see uh, when we take a look at uh, ticker symbol MU. So, Jane, I hope that that uh, helps you out with regard to uh, Micron Technologies. No other questions in. Of course, we just got about a minute to go before we uh, head to break, and then we've got the two-minute uh, wrap. But uh, so what else is it that we should really be focused on? I just want to keep things uh, simple out there. And the easiest way to keep things simple, again, watch the ES Mini just doing nothing more than trading between support and resistance and support is 2903.75 that is short term support 2903.75 you see a break below that well then we have to take a look at other areas of support the other thing we're watching is that spot volatility index today and that is 17 bucks trading 17 even Stephen. but we took a look at what that 50 day exponential moving average line is and that's the key level to be watching Dow's off 90, S&P down 13, NASDAQ 100 down 27. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's off 69, S&P 11, NASDAQ down 20. Uh, we're going to end the show by taking a look at Apple for Jim. Uh, Jim uh, just wants an analysis of Apple. So as we take a look at, by the way, Apple's trading up a buck 34 to 11.68 is the uh, print. If we take a look at uh, what Apple is doing in relationship to its uh, TAS market profiles, it's above the weekly and quarterly. Uh, those were in the uh, 187 and 197 uh, levels. Price is trading above the top of the weekly. That's at 209.16. And prices trading above the top of the daily. That's at 204.10. Uh, we do know that Apple is trading into its swing point from July 31st. That had a volume of 69 million shares. Yesterday, it tested with 24 million shares. Today, you're at 15 million shares. Nonetheless, a price can close above 211.30, Jim. That's the bottom of that swing point. Even with light volume, it says that price could go ahead and test the top of that level. That's at 221.37. Ideally, you would have volume, which is 69 million shares. I don't see that taking place today. A close inside a swing point with volume suggests you are more likely than not to go test the top of that. So at this stage here, I don't know if it is or it isn't, but a close below 2 11.30 today, uh, you'll have your third test and rejection of the bottom of that swing point on light volume out there. If we take a look and just step back, uh, take a look at the monthly time frame chart with Stevie's other tools out here. Uh, what do we know? I don't really have a significant topping pattern or signal. We know that price did pull back from uh, back in October. October of, uh, oops, hold on a second here, October of 2018 uh, is where we began seeing a pullback and where price pulled right back to on the monthly time frame chart was where it had broken out, 142.20. Very similar to take a look at a short-term chart for the ES Mini as we did. So understanding these breakout and breakdown levels using that TD setup nine count pattern is uh, very helpful in understanding what the market is doing. So if we take, so support held on the longer term basis out there. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, it does have a valid roads momentum indicator top and really not until price were to close above 224.23 would we say that it has found its mojo so what's apple doing jim in in the end there's nothing real bearish so to speak today about it but it's pushing into a key swing point with light volume and uh, watch today's close for a signal to 1130 hey folks thanks so much for being here stay tuned david white's up next tom o'brien three to five i'll be back with you on wonderful wednesday take care Thank you.